Hey, Ben. It's Nick from Oregon. Nick, how's it going, man? Hey, it's going good. So I wanted to ask, uh, kind of in relation to Jordan's question, but a little bit different, uh, I wanted to ask about a uh, third party in America. So I, I wouldn't say that uh, a third party or a fourth or whatever it may be is necessarily high on my priority list, but I'm curious about what you would think it would take uh, in America to make a third party viable. Um, we mm. see like Ken, um, I'm going to forget his last name, but I think it's Majai. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he's running on the Green Party uh, ticket, and I don't think that's necessarily like a huge uh, thing for the Green Party. Like I don't think he's like really boosting the Green Party brand so much as using it as a good platform to get in there. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm curious about what you would think it would take, whether it be Green Party, whether it be uh, PIP, whatever it may be. What do you think it would take for them to get to a, uh, a firm holding such as the Democratic and Republican Party? All right. Great question, man. Thanks for the call. Um, I'll do my best to answer that one. Um, that's a tough question because you have st uh, strategic concerns, but then you also have structural concerns. Structurally, our system, our two-party system, um, it's a winner-take-all system on the local level, on the district level. Um, it's a winner-take-all system. The, elector the way of the Electoral College is structured, uh, it is designed really to um, keep it as a two-party system. It's very, very difficult for a third party to gain traction the way our system is structured. In fact, there's um, something I mentioned on a, on a regular basis that we study in political science called Diverger's Law. Uh, and Diverger's Law basically says that the structure of our system automatically lends itself to a two party system. And if a third party were to get a sufficient number of votes to actually win, what happens by default is that that party ultimately becomes the second major party and the major party they, that they replace usually disappears. Um Structurally, that's the impediment. But in terms of like strategy, I said this back during the um, during the primaries. Parties like the Green Party, the Progressive Independent Party, um, uh, all of these Democratic Socialists of America, even though they're not really a third party um, or they're not a, a political party as much as they are an advocacy group, um, they are considering running some people. Sh strategically, they honestly have to do two things the obvious is they've got to raise a whole hell of a lot of money they have to because really all of all a, a party is besides the organizing structure right there's tr tremendous organizing organizing structures from the national level down to the local level so that's a significant thing that's built off the backs of a, a tremendous marketing machine you know everything about politics is marketing and marketing with millions and millions i mean half a billion dollars for a presidential election so there's got to be a lot of money involved um and i'm not saying that this has to be money from corporations or this from big donors this could be corporate money from the people much like bernie sanders did but you've got to raise money and then too in in the absence of money or even in the presence of money you have to be strategically out of the box to use a cliche you can't run you can't run a traditional style campaign when you're a third party because this traditional style campaign is geared towards two parties you can't wait for you can't wait for the opportunity to be on stage at uh as at a debate and think that that's going to be your way if i can just get to the debate then i can do x no you have to strategically get you have to get away from that because the system is already structured to keep you out and you're going to expend so much energy and resources trying to win the, the way that they win and you're not going to beat the system not 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 through the front door you have these guerrilla political guerrilla style tactics and here's the biggest thing you have to capitalize on the majority of americans who don't vote at all the political two major political parties don't, combined don't re represent the totality, don't represent the majority rather of the voting age population. So there are plenty of votes out there to be had that are not even affiliated with this two party system. And so you got to get out there and not wait to glean no, uh, uh, votes from the Democratic Party, not try to take votes for. I mean, if you get them, you get them. That's good. But you absolutely have to hit the ground get your army of volunteers door to door email by email phone call by phone call and not just tell them who you are 
but be there as a part of the community efforts that they are having, that they're doing. What's the best way to get somebody disillusioned about voting to get them to vote and to get them to support you is if you first support them and you are loyal to their cause. I'm telling you, that's the only way outside of that. Think about it. That is so common sense, but the Democratic Party is not doing that. The Republican Party is not doing that. So even though it's common sense, it's like a revolutionary idea because our two major parties are not doing it. So it's wide open for, for, for a party to get out there and build these relationships starting last year. Not last year for the 2016 election, but last year for the 2018 election. And to be doing it on a consistent basis every single day in perpetuity, not until the next election, but after the next election to be there in the community and be a part of them. That, I think that's the number one thing that's missing. One of the reasons uh, one of the reasons we have the progressive army is because if Benjamin Dixon is nothing else, Benjamin Dixon is loyal to a fault. Like I ride for people like, I, you know, they've got an issue. I'm involved with it as much as I can be there. Like if I can physically get there, I will physically get there. But if I can do nothing else but promote it for you, I will promote it for you. If you need something, I'm going to try to be there to do it. If you need help with something at the last minute, I try to be there and do it. It's just because that's just what I do. And what I realize is just just because of my loyalty to people, people uh, it blows me away how many people are loyal to the progressive army. And so it's like that with politics, man. You Politically you, and community organizing wise, you got to be loyal to the people that you're serving and show them that you're genuinely interested in what they're doing. You're not just there to get their loyalty. You're there to show your loyalty. If, if a party could get that idea and they can get it on a large scale and back it up with a you know, few hundred million dollars of small donations from the people, then they could replace, they would replace a major party over the long run. Um, and I still don't think that there will ever be three parties uh, just because of Diverger's law, but there can be a replacement, um, a takedown of one of the major parties at, over the very long term.